The first setting we will be taking a look at is texture quality. Texture quality determines the quality of the different textures inside the game. So this is the setting that will have the biggest impact on both your VRAM usage, but actually also your RAM usage. And therefore, the option that is best for you depends on the amount of RAM you have available on your PC, but also the amount of VRAM you have available on your GPU. In terms of actual performance, this setting has a very legible difference between the five different options, where at maximum you're going to lose around 3% performance, which you probably won't really notice in-game while playing the game. As you can see, between min, low and original, there's not that much of a difference, both in terms of performance, in terms of your VRAM usage, and in terms of your RAM usage. And therefore, I would recommend, no matter what, to at least use the original setting. Another thing to note that is you, if you want to go up to the ultra setting, you are going to use around 18 to 20% extra VRAM, around 30 to 35% extra RAM. I have also tested this in 1080p as you can see here, between original and ultra. For my recommendation, I would recommend that you have at least 8 to 10 gigabytes of VRAM if you're going to play in 4K with the ultra preset. And if you're going to play in 1080p, I would recommend that you have at least 6 to 8 gigabytes of VRAM if again you want to play in the ultra preset. Another thing to note is that this is going to have a very small impact on the actual quality of the game while you're just running around. Therefore, I would recommend that you use the highest possible setting you can while keeping within your VRAM and RAM limits. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my video. Today we're taking a look at God of War where we'll analyze the different settings to see how they compare in terms of FPS and quality. And lastly, I'll show my own optimal settings that I recommend. If you have any suggestions for future games you would like for me to analyze, feel free to write them in the comments below. If you liked the video, please like and consider subscribing for future videos where we'll take a look at other games. I wanted to showcase the two extremes of all low and all ultra to see both the performance but also the quality difference between the two. There's a few points I want to mention before we move on to the next setting. Firstly, even at all low, the game still looks great, which is just really good news for people with less capable hardware. Secondly, I also want to mention that in this game, in the settings menu, you have an option called original. And original is the same quality as the original game when it launched on the PlayStation. As you can see in the video, there's a 34% difference in performance between all low and all ultra, so we have a lot of headroom we can work with, so let's get started. Now let's take a look at model quality. Model quality controls the quality and the complexity of the game's characters and also the objects inside the game. In my testing, this has a very large impact on your performance. We can lose up to 9% of your performance going from original and all the way up to ultra. In my testing, however, I did not find any noticeable quality difference between these three different options. And therefore, I would actually recommend to just leave this at original. Because as far as I could see, you're not going to lose any noticeable quality. And you're going to be able to gain a lot of performance from doing so. Next up, we got Anisotropic Filter. Anisotropic Filter improves the sharpness of textures, especially those viewed either at a distance or at an angle. In games, this is most noticeable with the different roads or dirt roads or what you have in the specific game. Which is what I would try to test here in this scenario. In my testing though, I didn't find any noticeable difference between minimum and all the way up to ultra. Even though we do have around 5 to 4 to 5 percent performance difference between these five different options. Therefore, since I couldn't find any noticeable quality difference, I would simply recommend to leave this at min, since there doesn't seem to be any reason to go any higher. Now let's take a look at shadows. Shadows determines the quality of the different shadows inside the game. As you can see, we have a clear difference between our four different options inside this setting. However, with that difference, we also have a very big performance difference, especially between high and ultra, where we lose around 20% of our performance. Therefore, I would recommend to use high, since it gives us the best quality, while you only lose around 5% of your performance. Next up, we got Reflections. Reflections, which is also known as screen space reflections in other games, controls the reflections in certain reflective areas inside the game. Like I said, this only affects a very few, actually, certain areas or scenes in the game 
we will actually be able to see a difference. Because in this game, pools of water and puddles and all of that use other reflection techniques. And therefore, you won't be able to control the quality of those reflections with this setting. As you can see in my example, we have a quite a large difference in both quality, but also especially in performance. Where with Ultra Plus, we can lose up to almost 40% of our performance. For my recommendation, I would recommend to use the high option. The original option looks kind of spotty and to be frankly quite ugly. And it would be a shame in such a beautiful game as God of War to have this disabled. Especially since it only affects a certain amount of small scenes inside the game. Next up we got Atmospherics. Atmospherics controls the quality of the different fog elements inside the game. In my example here you can see that we are standing in front of a big black fog to be able to notice any difference between our four options. As you can see, we have a clear difference in performance between our four options, with an up to 8% performance difference between low and all the way up to ultra. However, in terms of the actual quality of the fog, it's very difficult to notice any quality difference between these four options. Here, however, it is worth noting, as you can see right here, that I did experience a weird kind of a glitch with the low setting which was really annoying and something that would be kind of game breaking if you were able to see if there was something you would experience a lot while playing the game. Furthermore, I know that other people have experienced other similar glitches with the original setting as well. Therefore, I would actually recommend to use the high setting for atmospherics to ensure that you're not going to experience any of those weird glitches. Now let's take a look at ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion will add some extra soft shadows to different small crevices in the game to make the lighting look a lot better. In God of War, it can be really difficult to see any difference between the three different options that you have. Because the difference between these three different options is actually in the intensity of the shadows. So the higher you go up in the options, the darker and slightly better the shadows will look. So while you're just running around, you probably won't even notice the difference if you have it on disable, original or high. Therefore, if you need the extra FPS, I would recommend to leave this at disable because even at disable, it's not actually disabled. It's just turned down the intensity of the shadows and you probably won't even notice the difference while you're playing the game. Now let's take a look at motion blur. Motion blur would add some extra blurriness to the image while you move your camera around. So as you can see here in my example, while we have it on either 5 or 10, so while we have it enabled basically, we get a lot of blurriness to the image while we move the camera fast from left to right and back again. I wanted to test this setting because in some games this can have a massive impact on your performance. However, the good thing is that in God of War, it doesn't have any impact on your performance whatsoever. So this is more of a personal preference. Generally, I recommend to turn motion blur off. But like I said, it's a personal preference, so it's up to what you prefer. Next up, we got film grain. Film grain will add some extra particles to the screen to make it seem a little bit more rough. In my testing, this has no impact on your performance whatsoever. And therefore, it's more of a personal preference. For my recommendation, I would recommend to have it below 5 because otherwise it can really distort and distract in the quality of the game and actually hurt the quality of the game because it's so intense. Now let's take a look at DLSS. DLSS is an upscaling tool made by Nvidia and therefore you need to have an Nvidia RTX graphics card to be able to take advantage of that. So if you do not have that, you can simply skip this section. Like I said, DLSS is an upscaling tool and therefore I have tested this in both 4K, 1440p and 1080p because my recommendation will differentiate depending on the resolution you are playing in. Another thing to note is that while you are changing your DLSS option, you are able to see what resolution is actually upscaling from. So for an example, when we have it on ultra performance in 4K, we are actually upscaling from 720p and all the way up to 4K. A last thing to note is that I would recommend for you to use the performance numbers from 4K because at both 1440p and 1080p I am CPU bottlenecked and therefore the performance numbers won't be as exact as the ones I have in 4K. Okay, if we then take a look at 4K, I would recommend for you to use the performance mode because 
at performance mode, I couldn't find any noticeable difference between that or between playing the game in native 4K. And the reason I don't recommend ultra performance is because I did notice some part of the game being slightly more blurry while I had it on ultra performance, which is probably because we are upscaling from 720p all the way up to 4K, which is quite a large difference. If we then take a look at 1440p, here I would recommend for you to use the quality mode, because all the other modes did kind of blurred out some parts of the game. The easiest way to see this is at the tree on the left side of my different examples here. We can see the tree trunk gets slightly more blurry when we have it on auto performance, performance or balance mode. Therefore, I recommend to use the quality mode. And lastly, if we take a look at 1080p, the story is actually the same as with 1440p. The game gets way too blurry when you have it on either auto performance, performance or balance mode. And therefore, I would recommend to use the quality mode. Now let's take a look at DLSS Sharpening. DLSS Sharpening is a sharpening tool applied upon the option that you have chosen within DLSS. So in my example here, I have chosen to use the auto performance preset where I'm currently playing in 4K. And the reason I'm doing this is because I wanted to firstly check whether or not this would make a difference to our performance. So on the left, I have the standard of 35 and on the right, I have the highest that we can go at around 100. And as you can see in my test results, there was no difference whatsoever to performance between the two options. In my next example, I wanted to test this in 1080p in ultra performance to see if this might be a good way to increase the quality even at the lower preset of the LSS. So even at either ultra performance or the performance options where you are going to start to notice a quality decrease while you're playing the game especially if you're playing in lower resolutions. As you can see in my example, that's not that much of a difference between 0 and 100, but it does make, uh, make it slightly more sharp, and therefore it could be a good option to turn this up if you need to use either the performance or the ultra performance option of DLSS. You can also have the game look slightly more sharp. Next up, we got Fidelity FX Super Resolution. Fidelity FX Super Resolution is AMD's response to DLSS. And the good thing about Fidelity FX Super Resolution, beside that amazing long name, is that it can be used by anyone, and therefore is a very good alternative if you're not able to use DLSS. It's an upscaling tool like DLSS, and therefore you're able to gain a lot of performance without taking too much of a hit to your quality of the game. Like with DLSS, I have tested this both in 4K, 1440p and 1080p because my recommendation will be different depending on the resolution you are playing in. If we first take a look at 4K, here I would recommend for you to use the ultra quality preset because even at the quality preset you can still get the game look slightly blurry and therefore it's not worth using that option. If we then take a look at 1440p, here I'm starting to be CPU bottlenecked and therefore I would recommend for you to use the performance numbers from 4K instead of the ones from 1440p and later from 1080p. If we take a look at the quality results, here I would actually recommend for you to use the ultra quality preset. Because even at the quality preset I did notice some parts of the screen getting slightly blurry. And like with 4K that is something that would personally annoy myself. However you can always go further down if you want to get more performance. And lastly, if we take a look at 1080p, here I would actually also recommend to use the ultra quality preset because it seems to be the best one in terms of quality where you don't actually lose any quality, but you still gain a lot of performance while you're playing the game. Now let's take a look at our final setting, NVIDIA Reflex. To be able to utilize NVIDIA Reflex, you need to have an NVIDIA's graphics card that's either from the 900 series or something newer than that. NVIDIA Reflex will go in and lower your system latency. So that's the latency from you clicking your mouse or pressing a key on your keyboard to something actually happening on screen. Firstly, I wanted to demonstrate that this has nothing to do and will not impact your performance whatsoever, which is always nice. Secondly, if we take a look at the actual latency numbers, you can see that by going from off to on plus boost, we almost have a 50% lower latency than we had before, which is quite a large difference. And even at just on, we still have a 40% lower latency, which is really nice. 
one thing I do need to explain is that the difference between on and on plus boost is that on plus boost will boost your GPU's clock speed to be able to gain those higher or in this case gain those lower latency numbers. This therefore also means that you are going to output more heat because you are going to consume more power. And therefore this is something I would not recommend for anyone playing in a badly cooled laptop or just a badly cooled PC in general. There I would just recommend to use the on setting instead. And since the difference is so small, it's better to be safe than sorry. Therefore, for my general recommendation for this setting is that I would highly recommend for you to use it and either use on or on plus boost depending on the kind of PC you're playing on. Here are my own custom settings which are based off the recommendations I have made throughout the video. Do keep in mind that you have to adapt texture quality based on the amount of VRAM you have available. You also have to adapt the upscaling technology you're going to use, be that DLSS or Fidelity FX, depending on the hardware you have. In this showcase, I have used the Fidelity FX because this is an option that everyone can use. However, I would normally recommend for you to use DLSS if you have an NVIDIA graphic card that is able to do so, because that will give a better result in both quality, but also in FPS. With the recommended settings, we were able to get 40% more performance compared to all Ultra, while still having the game look great. But thank you all for watching. If you've made it this far and been able to use this video to get better FPS in God of War, please like and subscribe for future videos where we'll take a look at other games. If you had any feedback on the videos or any other tips or tricks to get more FPS in God of War, please share them in the comments below. If you're interested in these kinds of videos, maybe check out the video I made on Resident Evil Village. Have a nice day. Bye bye.